Hey, this is Matt Wimmer from Brody Precision. In this video, we are taking a look at the new 415 release from Tritium uh, of Niagara, uh, available now for the Vicon brand, and it will become available shortly for those other brands as you've uh, become accustomed to as they test their software against the latest release. So keep an eye on BP Tech Center, and we'll have those updated and uh, uploaded once they become available. Um, in this video, we'll take a look at the individual features that have been added to 4.15. It's a point release, so there's a lot of new stuff that was added. Um, we'll take a look at a few of the features in depth, and then we'll just sort of generally look at a few others. And then in uh, future videos, we'll go way hands-on and look at some of the major features like um, Fox over WebSockets and how you set that up and what that looks like to actually use. So let's jump into all of that and uh, take a look. All right, so Niagara 415 summary. We've got a whole bunch of new features. This is a major release, so as you would expect, we've got a bunch of new stuff. Um, all of these bold items will expand on a little bit further. Everything else I'll just highlight in uh, a little bit of detail here on this summary page. So first one is we've got new HTML5 web views. One of them is a pretty big deal that we haven't had um, at all uh, that I think brings us to a full um, almost feature parity between Workbench and what we have access to in the web. Uh, next, JS9000 gets Wi-Fi support. That's Wi-Fi support up to uh, AC. So uh, you've got a bunch of options there and gives you the full capabilities of the 9000 hardware wise. And then we've got some driver updates, Modbus, OPC, UA, SNMP, and BACnet all got some updates. Um, nothing massive, but they did get some changes and uh, new features, bug fixes, that kind of thing. And then uh, we've got some big ones, Fox over WebSocket. We'll dive into that a little bit further in a moment, um, but this lets you... Uh, access your stations over Fox without having to open up the Fox port. Pretty neat technology, and you've probably been using this kind of WebSocket technology without even noticing it um, on the internet before. Kit control is refreshed a little bit, some new objects. We'll talk about that in a moment as well. Niagara Access, so the access control software and solution that Niagara has in Niagara. Um, or Tritium has a Ni Niagara, excuse me, um, has added OSDP support. Think of OSDP as the backnet of access, ac access control and uh, physical security, uh, which lets you bring in third-party IP uh, access control devices. Uh, Tritium's no longer really doing physical uh, hardware for the access control world because there's so many other options out there that are IP-based and that we can bring in pretty easily with this OSDP. Again, we'll probably do a separate video on this in the future, but uh, worth highlighting here. Some security enhancements that you'll want to know about. We'll talk about those in a little bit uh, as well. And then uh, BACnet test lab certification. So the JS8000 and 9000 have uh, the BACnet building controller certification from the BACnet labs. And the supervisor has it uh, for AWS or uh, advanced operating workstation pro profile. Whew. Okay. Our new HTML5 views. Big, big, big one. The PX editor is now available through the browser, so you can build your graphics through the browser without having to open up Workbench in order to do so. I think with this uh, functionality, they're pretty much at full parity with what you can do in Workbench as what you can do now in the browser. Um, another one that brings them there as well is the relation manager. So if you're doing a lot of relations between your objects or your devices um, alongside your tagging, uh, you can now do all of that through the browser using the HTML5 views. Fox over WebSocket. All right, so this is uh, one that is going to take a little bit of explaining, but I think it's worth it, and uh, I think this is a really cool feature that might go unnoticed um, if you didn't otherwise know about it. So this allows for a full Fox connection using only your HTTPS port. Um, this is uh, great because it requires you to open less ports. That's always a good thing. And uh, your 
IT security folks may only want you to open up 443 or HTTPS uh, and not let you open up other ports. So it gives us a lot more flexibility. And the setup process is literally just ch turning on this Fox over WebSocket property uh, in your Fox service, and then you get the full functionality. You'll see a, an additional dropdown when you go to connect to a station through Workbench, um, where you normally would have selected Fox or Fox S. You'll now see Fox S over WebSocket. Um, so you just drop that down, put in your IP address as you normally would, and then now you're using the HTTP, HTTPS port as opposed to your Fox port. And the way this works, so previously the way that we've always done things is, say we had a user who was accessing through the browser using port 443, they're going to connect in, they're going to go through the router which has the port forwarded, and then that's going to forward on to our station, uh, Jay's supervisor that's out at the site, and uh, talk to it that way. Same thing on the Fox S side. Uh, we have Workbench open. We're connecting. We've got uh, 4911 open in the router. We're punching through that router and talking directly 4911 to our Jace. The way that it's working now with web WebSocket is both of those situations you're using 443. Now the uh, Workbench knows, hey, uh, I'm going to talk 443, but actually I'm talking uh, Fox S. So do whatever you need to do, Jace or Station, to make that happen. And what it does is it talks the 443 through the router, as you'd expect, and then it gets to the station, and then your web server is a little bit smarter now, and it can basically establish a connection for you to your uh, station and the Fox S uh, port uh, internally without having to expose it remotely and uh, give you all the access to the information and data that you would expect from your workbench when you're connected through Fox. We'll have more detail on that and actually the setup and usage uh, in a future video. So stay tuned for that if that is uh, interesting for you. Next, we're getting a refresh of kit control. Ashray has this new um, specification which is intended to uh, sort of standardize the blocks that are available on various um, HVAC programming control platforms so that uh, you get a specification and no matter who is installing it, no matter what control line they're using to do it, they have the ability to do so because all the blocks that they'll need at the basic level are there in order to get it done. So in order to meet that specification, Tritium had to add in a handful, and uh, you can see what they are on the screen here. Uh, probably could have made these things kind of happen with a couple blocks before, but now they're sort of shrunk down into single uh, elementary blocks. So security enhancement. Um, first thing is we now have the ability to use common access card. Uh, authentication. So if you're working with a super large end user or governmental end user who uses the physical um, ID cards uh, placed into the slot on the keyboard in order to get access to their computer and such, you can now use that to authenticate within Niagara, which is a pretty nice uh, feature to have for those larger installs. And now we're getting uh, user login history so that the user themselves can see um, when they've logged on so that now your users can do a little bit of security auditing on themselves which is always a good thing any any additional security features on on that side of things is always good to have and then um, Tritium is encrypting hash passwords that are in your bog file so if you don't have the passphrase you no longer will be able to get into a station offline now even whereas previously you'd be able to get into the station and um, unlock the station, the BOG file, in order to get access, you no longer will have the ability to do so because of the additional encryption that's happening on those users and passwords. So now we get to the uh, changes in the currently supported revisions. So now uh, 415 obviously is supported. This becomes our LTS. This is being supported until August 2028. So we've got a good three and a half years thereabouts of uh, support coming to us for 415. 
And 414 is now the uh, other supported version. It's not the latest version, uh, but it's not LTS either. It's a little bit strange. But it will stay supported until Niagara 5 is released, which will likely be the end of this year or early next year. All right, so that is Niagara 415. Um, hopefully it was helpful and informative for you on what those new features are and what's available. As I mentioned before, uh, Vicon version is available now. It's up on BP Tech Center. Uh, the other brands, Honeywell, Johnson, they will all follow along and be released as soon as their uh, technical folks approve everything and make sure all of their software works properly against that new version. Um, as always, if you have any questions or comments um, about 415, leave them down below and um, hopefully we'll get to them in future videos. And uh, like and subscribe if you haven't already. We'll be taking a look at some of these features in more depth here in the future. So you'll definitely want to make sure you're subscribed. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.